Represent the city. Oh, How old's the oldest? Hmm? She turned 10 yesterday. Okay. Oh, good. good. Still you lunch. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. They had me put on this thing on or this like. Well, hey, I was up in your old stock. When I went to the bathroom, I was on my head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, Warren Pismoto, his mother passed away. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, so uh, they had her service up there. <laughs> 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 hey. I didn't know. I wish I would know. What day was that? <clears throat> Mr. Riley, the bids come in on your street tomorrow. So, no, uh, Thursday. I thought, hey, I said, hey, I know. My neighbor is really think. upset about this whole thing. In. She comes out to take her trash cans out <laughs> with all this rain we've had. Oh.
<laughs> okay, I call to order the regular February 27th meeting of the Planning Commission. Oh, sorry, Lisa. I just realized you were walking in. Okay, can we roll call, please? Chair Kulte? Here. Vice Chair Andrade? Here. Commissioner Colt? Here. Commissioner Grove? Here. Commissioner Lowe? Here. Commissioner Riley? Here. And Commissioner Sulfokani? Here. Please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, at this time we'll open it up for oral communications for somebody who would like to come up and speak on something that's not on our agenda. Please come forward and sign in. Okay, seeing nobody come forward, we'll close oral communications. And do I turn it over to you, Steve, or to Michelle for the reorganization? Um, I can do it for you, okay. Michelle. Well, I'll start off by introducing everyone to Michelle Mueller, <coughs> our new department secretary, and she comes uh, from Southgate to us. And she's been a great part of our organization already and very capable, and she's keeping us in shape. All right. Welcome. Thank you. So with that, um, I, it, now would be the opportunity um, for the commission to take nominations for chair for the upcoming year. Um, I'm looking for the staff report. That's okay. I know that. Um, Are you sure? So we'll take nominations for chair for the next year and then after that we'll take nominations for the vice chair and we'll do these through a roll call vote Michelle. Mm -hmm. uh, with that uh, are there any nominations for chair of the planning commission for calendar year 2017 i nominate larry andrade second that was quick we have a nomination second roll call Chair Pulte? Yes. Vice Chair Andrade? Okay, so I'm voting for myself. Yes. Sure. Sure. It's always a weird It's a little strange. <laughs> Commissioner yes. Rose? Aye. Commissioner Lowe? Here. Yes. Aye. <laughs> Riley? All the above. Uh, yes. And Commissioner Slopakani? Yes. And now we'll turn it over to the new chair who will take nominations for vice chair. Switch. We're switching already this meeting? Yeah. yeah. Yep. It, it like happens Evans immediately. Wow. Yeah. 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 You're in charge now. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. You're ready. You're ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm actually taking nominations now for vice chair. Any nominations? I'll nominate Art to both. Second. <laughs> Any other we nominations? Have, we have any others? So we have a motion and a second. Chair Kulte? No. Chair anymore. Commissioner <laughs> 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 Yes. <laughs> Aye. Uh, Chair Andrade? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Groves? Yes. Commissioner Lowe? Yes. Commissioner Riley? Yes. And Commissioner Sopokan? Yes. We'll ask him if he wants to be it. Make him vote. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Do all right. um, you all want to rotate chairs now, or wait till you want to swap, Certainly or you want? Idea. We can do it next week. Uh, next next month. time's fine. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm good. With that, Larry, then you'll turn it over to the next item, which is number six. Uh, okay. Well, wait. Do we? Have three minutes? No. Oh, you're back. Okay. There we go. Okay, yeah. there we go. Oh, it was the approval of minutes. Yeah. It was, okay. Okay, so, yeah, so number six, uh, approval of minutes for the regular meeting of November 16th, 2016. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. I'll second. All right. Oh, just so we have a motion and a second. Okay, yes. So, well, there was two. Oh. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All abstain. Low. And any opposed? 
So we have one abs one abstention and on that. This is good. Okay. okay. Uh, number seven, the consent calendar. There is nothing on the consent calendar, so we can move on to the public hearings. <clears throat> 8A is uh, the four residential apartment units on one parcel. Site plan review SPR 16-10. Sure, so uh, Excuse me. I think I have a conflict. Oh. Okay. With this one, Chair. Okay. It's within 500 feet of my house. Okay. So, I'll see you later. The queues. I don't have to do anything for that, do I? Between Catella and Florista, right? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, no one more up, right? It's between, between Florista and Sausalito. Florista and. Who's the next street up? Florista and Catella. No, it's Catella. <coughs> yeah, I'm looking it's at it. It's Catella. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's right. Oh, okay. It's right in the middle. You guys of don't know either, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. That's okay. No problem. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, site plan, plan review 1610 is a yes. consideration of a four unit residential apartment project uh, at 10922 Walnut Street. It's a 7,375 square foot parcel uh, in the multiple family residential zone district. And uh, it will demolish an older home. It's like a 1910 craftsman that has hardly any craftsman stuff left on it at all, uh, any style to it. Uh, the applicants are here with us tonight, Mike Garnica in the middle there, and Ron w Wickstrom in behind him. And uh, in the project, Building 1, uh, let me bring that up here, that's the house that's existing now, uh, and that's behind the house. That's uh, like a little workshop. And there is the property from the sky. And the front building has uh, one unit on the bottom floor, that's building one, and then two uh, units on the top floor. Then the back <coughs> building is just one unit on the top floor. Uh, the uh, three front units are two bedroom and the rear unit is a three bedroom. The gr ground floor unit up front has its own private yard here and all the other units have um, uh, balconies. Uh, the, there are projections into the front setback surrounding the doorway that causes the structure to only be 18 feet from the property parcel line. And staff has conditioned uh, the project to be revised to a 20 foot setback and uh, the uh, applicant wanted to talk about that later. So when they come forward, they'll talk about that. Uh, and the applicant, it will be required to remove a front driveway because everything will be accessed from the, the alley. And uh, the, when they remove the front driveway, they have to fix the neighbor's driveway because the neighbor kind of shares a driveway with this <coughs> property, so they'll have to move it over. And unfortunately, there's a water main there, uh, so they are going to have to move that as well. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, this is going to be a modern craftsman style building. Um, it's mo modern but, uh, in that it uh, has little square windows and things like that. Uh, but it uh, has a lot of the features of the old craftsman houses. It <coughs> fence uh, encloses uh, the front yard of the first unit, um, first floor unit. And the two foot tall uh, fence is uh, vinyl and uh, staff is suggesting that they make that something else, maybe a, a, some kind of block fence or something more appropriate to it. Uh, so we're asking you if you would like to add that condition. We didn't put that condition in, but we talked about it today and felt like we should say that. Uh, the front facade has stucco, siding and stone. Uh, you can see the, uh, well, they're in your packet as well, the right. color board. Uh, all windows have window trim and some of the windows have shutters. Uh, the roof will be shingles. 
and both buildings have architectural elements on all sides um, as opposed to just flat stucco expanses on the side uh, and some of the some of them have siding and shutters on the side I mean some of the sides do. Uh, the applicant must meet a 15% landscaping requirement and they meet 17 feet I mean 17 percent so they've covered that well and staff feels the project is compatible with the surrounding land uses and standards of the zoning district and supports approval of this project uh, with two things to be changed uh, the vinyl fence uh, we would ask that you add that to be replaced and with a block fence of some type with either stucco or stone on the outside and uh, we also noticed today that the dumpster is listed as two dumpsters for some reason in the uh, resolution so it should be one dumpster it's going to be for these two buildings so those are two small changes to it uh, and back to you sure Great. okay thank you for that so I think uh, at this point, would we want to uh, open up a public hearing? Is that correct? On that? Okay. You want to go ahead? Okay. So the applicant would like to come up and um, present any additional information to the uh, commission. Good evening. My name is Ron Wickstra and I prepared the drawings and the designs for this project. And I've worked in the past on numerous projects with your city and I want to make a comment about Tom and Steve. They're both very accommodating and meet you at any time you want to to discuss the projects. So it's unusual a lot of times it's hassle getting people to, to meet with you and answer questions. And I have a lot of dumb questions. <laughs> This um, thing I want to talk about is this 18-foot setback. The, uh, the actual building footprint and the structure itself is at 20 feet, which is the requirement. And these two-foot encroachment is just two columns that are 18 inch by two foot deep that enhances uh, and gives a little bit of covered porch protection on the door. Uh, your code does allow to encroach 30 inches into the front yard setback and this is basically 24 inches but I understand from Tom that the problem is that these columns go all the way down on the ground and so that makes it a building setback not a projection and I was hope that you would allow us to have these two small projections on the front and also noting when driving the street majority of the houses or multi-family structures built are a much less than 20 foot setback right now but Tom indicated that in the past it was a 15 foot setback in the front so that's why those buildings are closer so we were, really wouldn't be much closer than a lot of the other structures on the street and as for the little fence in the front, we can certainly make some new proposals for, for that little privacy fence. That's is that all I have to say? Question. Yeah, do it, yeah. So as far as uh, to accommodate the 20-foot the setback, how, how does that compromise the project to, to shift that building back? Well, I can't shift the building back unless you give us back that two and a half feet we have to dedicate. <coughs> which probably isn't going to happen. Uh, you know, the lot is a shallow lot compared to uh, some of the other lots. And we're pretty much set building depth, 28 foot drive backups and the rear setback of 10 feet. So I can't really squish the buildings or move it back. Uh, I could probably make a new elevation that would eliminate that two foot projection. But as it is now, I, I think the elevation looks pretty nice and I don't really think it'd be detrimental to the speed of the neighborhood if these two columns were in that 20 foot setback. So Tom, is that correct that the only thing that's in the, that's making them out of? In the 20 feet, yeah. Yeah, is, is those, those two, two columns? columns. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and the code talks about projections to mean like 
uh, roof ease Patio. and things like that. <coughs> and uh, so, you know, it's. Push. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if the columns were replaced by like uh, corbels or cantilevers that didn't go to the fine. ground, then it would be in compliance? Right. Yes. I think he said it had to be six feet off the ground or? Uh, yeah, it's, it, we're not, you know, sticklers on that, you know, on that. Uh, but d yeah, corbels would do it. I mean, that's usually what's done. Uh, you know, on other projects, people do the corbels and they put out a, a roof that goes out the full 30 inches that they're allowed. So, so right now, the way that that sits, you've got the, the roof, <clears throat> the columns coming down. Are those columns actually attached uh, to the house, or the is, house, there, yes. is there is there there's no space in between? Yeah, not, it's just a column space. coming it's off like the a house. A covered porch. Right, but yeah. I was wondering if there was a space behind the column. Yeah. No, there's so not. So those go directly to the yeah. to the house. If we were to eliminate the columns, we'd probably have to remove the stonework. But it's really not appropriate to have stone floating six feet off the ground. Right. You know, <laughs> some kind of an architectural, you know, beam going across. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that would have to be done somewhere else, and I'd have to consider how we could maybe put stone somewhere else, <coughs> in or maybe just eliminate it completely. But I feel the columns and the, that little roof adds a lot to the depth of the building. Do we have that question, Steph? Do we have that latitude to to say we're okay with column? To say we're okay with the column, as opposed to that I'm comfortable with you saying this is a qualified projection into the front yard setback. It's not square footage. Right. It's an architectural, right. it's just it's a, an architectural feature. Just keep in mind that we, based on that decision, we'll make a policy document and then we have to be fair to anyone else in the future that comes along and we'll memorialize it in our formal manner that we do. Um, but it's still it's still our decision if somebody were to bring something forward at that point that doesn't meet the setback, correct? If somebody was, you know, pushing the envelope, I certainly think you could take their temperature on that. The seven of you are pretty talented at knowing when somebody's just trying to get a little more square footage on a property versus trying to have an architectural feature projecting in the front yard. I Correct. Think you know the difference. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Does the the verbiage in the code say that the projection can't be connected the, to the, the ground? The code says architectural features on the main structure, e.g., cornices, eaves, garden windows, canopies, etc may extend a maximum of 30 inches into a required side setback. Eaves, canopies, cantilevered balconies, decks, similar features may extend a maximum of 30 inches into the required front or rear setback. A balcony can. Council, what section is that? Yeah. That's 1716 <coughs> 100. 17-16-100. <coughs> so we get to the point where a balcony, someone can stand on it, it can project 30 inches. I think the pole that holds the balcony is probably even though this isn't that case. Right. Sure. This column does not hold a balcony. But if it did, you right. probably said that, that be, it meets this requirement. Yeah. But you, Ron, don't use this to do this on every property, though. Yeah. <laughs> Unless it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <coughs> I mean, certainly that's the case. If, if you I take those, okay. I think we'd probably like to make a finding, add a finding to the resolution though before we wrap it up. And, we'll make, and we have to know. eliminate that condition too. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, certainly if you take those columns out of there, it's a completely different look to the structure. Right. It's yeah. not good. Exactly. So. Okay. Don't you think so? Yeah. Fine. I was just going to see if you had a definition of architectural projection. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if it was 15 foot setback, we'd be fine. Yeah. Oh. <coughs> okay. so. no. I'll make a motion to approve it with the changes to the front fence that staff has required has asked for. And also the and dumpster. The, the dumpster thing, and then the dumpster. And what and condition are we eliminating, Tom? Uh, number seven. Number 26. No, I'm going to change the motion. 
to hold one. Final thing could be I, number. I would recommend changing section three to say, based upon such findings and determinations, the Planning Commission approves site plan review SPR 16 10 as represented by plans elevation, subject to the conditions located in Exhibit A, um, and finds that the columns are architectural projections which are allowed pursuant to code. I like that. Sounds good. Where was that inserted? Yeah. That's going to go into <laughs> section three Here. rather than to have to start to read on the it. actual yeah. on the resolution. The resolution. Okay. Okay. Yes, if there are no other questions, we can, uh, or any other comments from, did you have another question? I, I just thought we'd ask, so you're aware of the changes and the conditions that we're, we're discussing right now? Does yeah. that, is that agreeable? Yeah, I mean, the, about the trash enclosures uh, and, and the vinyl fence in the front. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. okay. Okay. No yeah. other comments? Yeah, we Thank can you. close the public hearing. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. So do we, yeah, we already we have the motion, and we're that motion. Are we good with the motion at this point? Yeah, we're good with the motion. We haven't had a vote on the motion. No, I understand. Yeah, we need a second. I'll second. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? None. And let it be known that Wendy recused herself. <clears throat> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Here, yes. I need your help. Can I be excused? Can I be excused for a minute? I have to talk to you. See ya. You can go ahead. Oh. Okay. We'll have to wait for a. Ron? Got no customer. <laughs> 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 So was resolution 1701 also adopted in that? Yeah, that was, that's what we just them? approved, yes. Well, you had, you had uh, actually there was two. There was 16, well, it was this for 1610 and then this uh, oh, resolution really? 1701. Yeah. Okay. So that's a okay. same, yeah, no, we're back on. <clears throat> okay, good. <clears throat> okay, so we are on to uh, staff reports. And there's a uh, post-construction update on the McDonald's drive-through. Yes, uh, Chair Andre, members of the commission. Uh, this re review of conditional use permit 33690M and site plan review 1101M concerns the McDonald's drive-through that he uh, asked to change a while back. The Kevin Koch is a owner of the McDonald's here in town and a few other McDonald's, I think, right? Sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he <laughs> He's here tonight to talk uh, about anything you'd like to. If you, you've noticed anything about the, the new drive-through staff has not had any calls like we were getting there for a while about backups. Uh, I, I personally have sat out there in the parking lot and watched just to see during lunchtime whether it backs up and it seems to work really well, which I was uh, frankly shocked because I thought people wanting to pull out of spaces and stuff would get bothered being stuck but it, it seemed to go well so uh, at this point you know you can ask questions of mr. Kasha and and uh, see if you have nothing to say you can leave I don't know but <laughs> <laughs> back to you thanks Hello. good evening uh, did you want me to make a statement about how things are going or answer questions first no I think a statement would be great okay um, thank you for letting me come back here and, and update you um, we're absolutely thrilled with the way things worked out. This is a, a one-off that I designed. McDonald's cookie cutter designs did not fit this lot and we wasted you know, maybe nine months with them trying to figure it out. Um, I dug 
back into my old engineering kit from college, Cal State <laughs> Long Beach, and tried to figure out a, a better way to build a mouse trap. And it's 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 different. Uh, most of the double drive-throughs, whether it be Chick-fil-A or other McDonald's, generally you start in one lane, you separate into two, uh, order, and then you merge back into one. In order to do that, um, we were going to eat up about five parking stalls uh, to have that that, that uh, split into two and back into one, which is unacceptable. So I designed uh, two drive throughs that <coughs> just start in different directions, and then after ordering, they merge back together. And as you know, the big problem was in the morning between 7 and 9 a.m., we get all that traffic heading eastbound, and on one cycle of the light, we might get eight cars. It's not unreasonable to get eight cars out of one cycle and it would back us up onto the street pretty quickly. Now, my team is very fast compared to other McDonald's. We were averaging in the mornings uh, 104 cars per hour, uh, which is pretty darn quick. Oh my um, but we couldn't, we, that speed did not help us with that arrival rate. That's what we couldn't, couldn't deal with. We needed to find a way to get more cars on the road, uh, on the lot, I should say. So, by having two drive-through lanes and cars able to stack in two different ways, um, I can now get a total of about 20 cars on my lot, all in the drive-through, uh, seven from the pickup point back to before you order, and then from those two order points back, I can get another seven in each lane. So I can get about 20, 21 cars, uh, depending on the size of them, uh, which is a, a big improvement. Um, it, it's, it's helped a lot. Uh, and without any advertising or balloons or hoopla, just doing it. Um, I'd like to share some of the results, if, if I may. Sure. Um, we have served, and the, the, the construction ended, I'll say, about six weeks ago, where they were totally off our lot, landscapers and everyone the last little bit. Um, in that time, in my drive through we served uh, 5,323 more customers than that same period of time the prior year. That averages out to about 127 more customers per day. And, and I think of that basically as the number of people we were just turning away. That mm -hmm. we're coming down <clears throat> the street, seeing that line, and going, eh, I don't have time, and going. So by having them see that they could get onto the lot, they felt more comfortable. Now what we needed to do was to serve them even faster than we were so that they would trust us when they saw those lines. And my, my staff, through a combination of increases in technology for them, um, different equipment, different headsets, different things to help them move faster, we've been able to move our peak hour, which is not just one time, but we've had several times, from 104 cars in one hour to 126 Jeez. cars in an hour since we started this. So it's less than 30 seconds of cars moving. And so the, I think what's happened is, is, is the community kind of um, trusts us now that even if they see a long line, they know it's not gonna be that, that long. And they're moving every 30 seconds, they're moving one space forward. So it's been, it's been, um, it's been really great. We're serving through that drive-through on average about 127 more customers every day. Um, to the tune of about $35,000 more in sales uh, by doing this. So I'm, I couldn't be happier. I, I appreciate the opportunity to, to, to come up with a rather unique solution. And uh, I think it's been working out really, really great. So that's the, uh, the new, new what, what we actually did, if you're not familiar with our original order point, that right about here, mm -hmm. and we designed this one to come in around here, mm -hmm. but it's necessary that those two order points be at the same spot from the pickup window so that everything is going the same. So we actually moved this one around back to here so that they were equidistant from the pickup area so that everything's timed right. You don't want someone, order, someone else's order ready before someone else, so you want it the same distance exactly. And, and, uh, and that's how we did it. And we did it parking neutral. We did not, did not take up any spaces. We had to get a little creative. Uh, in the back corner, 
there was a trash corral that was about 20 by 20. And I don't have that much trash. We have a trash compactor on site that we can press all of our trash into cubes before we bring it out. So we only had one can in there. Uh, so what we did is we cut the trash corral in half which is more than, a room, more than enough room, and that enabled us to get another stall. And then um, we shifted down one of our planters and made another stall there. So we recaptured the two stalls that were taken by building that area right there. <clears throat> Excellent. Do you have any questions or comments for? I haven't seen anybody backed up on Catella since it, the second one opened. And that's the best news. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the best, that's a, danger, that's a dangerous spot. And, and so we're very happy. Yeah. I, I, I shared with the staff the only time that that might happen, and I've stood out there many mornings and watched, is if someone is parked in the very first one or two stalls, <coughs> turn onto our lot and they make a hard right and park in one of those very first two stalls. If they are backing out of those stalls when cars are trying to come in, there is a hesitancy where they have to wait for that person to execute their three-point turn to get out of that stall before it comes on. But exclusive of that, I have not seen it be a problem. And our people are aware that in the event that we have a really, really, really busy day, um, they know to run out there and do what they were doing before, which was asking the customers to circle the building. Um, and it's few and far between, maybe once or twice in the last six weeks, it's had to happen. Um, and the customers are a little bit more agreeable to it because they seem to feel that we're moving a lot faster and so um, they, they don't seem to mind as much. Um, the other advantage that we got by moving that, that order point back is that gives my kitchen a little bit more time to get the food ready so they're not waiting. And so the actual time uh, between paying and picking up your order has dropped about 20 seconds. Uh, we have more, more likely to have an order ready. We don't have to hold them there or have them to pull forward and wait. So there's just been a lot of benefits to the whole project. It's impressive. Thank you. It is impressive. Very much so. Mm -hmm. Anything? Anybody? No. Do you have any, any questions I have? No. Yeah. No, that was uh, very informative. Uh, thank you for the information. Thank and you. Um, congrats on the success. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And, and, and I'm, I'm just happy. <coughs> you know, it's always nice to see that um, there's a demand, and we are just taking care of the extra people who already wanted to get their coffee that morning that we're leaving, so I'm, I'm, I'm pleased about that. May, may I bring up one item that was briefly brought up when I was here six months ago, and if it's inappropriate, just let me know and I'll withdraw. Um, at the time, someone asked me what was the, how was the volume of this restaurant compared to my other restaurants, and, and I said it, it, it's, it's growing. From the time I bought the restaurant today, I bought it about two and a half years ago, um, it's gone up about $300,000 in sales. And with this project, I'm sure it will go even a little bit more. And um, one of the reasons why I believe it's, it's not even higher is the difficult situation of a U-turn that you have for our westbound travelers. And I, I happen to notice a sign that kind of gave me an idea. Um, there's, a, there's, there, there's a sign right before the alley um, as you're coming eastbound that tells us, you know, between 4 and 6 p.m., you can't stop to turn right onto that alley right after Chase Bank. And it's because you don't want people backing up. And it, it made me wonder, have you in the past or considered with the two, uh, two left turn onlys that are uh, from Catella towards Los uh, Alamitos Boulevard South, having the inner one <clears throat> allowed to do U-turns under non-peak time. Is that something that anyone has ever considered? Uh, is it, do you find it to be dangerous? But if we looked at just our non-peak time, non-peak in the morning, non-peak in, in the rush hour in the evening, would it be possible to have a, a, a U-turn there? I think that's probably a better question to serve to the, plan, uh, the uh, traffic commission actually, mm. and maybe something that you can work with these guys to bring up at one of the 
a, agendize or something and maybe bring up to them uh, at, at one of their meetings. Okay. And, and pos I mean, th th they're the ones that are going to actually have the, the wherewithal to deal with that one. Sure. Next Wednesday night, same place, same time. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, not this Wednesday, but next. Next Wednesday. Thing okay. is you have it a, might you have, be worth it. You have a green arrow, a right turn green arrow. Might be worth it. That and that's all the stuff they have to look at before yeah, they yeah. decide. So, the timing yeah. of everything is reliant yeah. upon it. Okay. Well, thank you. Are there any other questions at all? No, thanks. Thank you for the update. Okay. Yeah. Thank very you much. so much for letting me do this project and, and uh I'm gonna come I, by and I'm check glad it out. to see that we solved the problem. A dangerous problem in the city. Thank you again. Yeah. Thanks. Mr. Chair, Kevin has Thank been a very responsible owner of the property. He always takes our calls and answers our uh, concerns and addresses any issues that we have in the city. And we really appreciate him being here. This is such a successful yeah. project that I think he should start thinking about franchising this, maybe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe so. You, yeah, you might have a future there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you again. Thank, Thank you, you very much. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, and then uh, I guess on to under staff reports, uh, this is the resolution of intention 17 02. Right. Amending regulations for accessory dwelling units in the residential zones in the city to comply with new state legislation. Um, with that, everyone say a big sigh and say thank you state of california for this wonderful new law that we have to <laughs> abide by there's my my commentary's over <laughs> um, but this is one of those things that happened last year and you'll see uh, many of the cities in california are starting to address this issue there's some cities trying to get a little creative that's why we didn't start ours on january 1 kind of watching what other cities do but we also wanted to present you with what the state has provided us as the guidebook so you can take a look at their tone and the manner of which they develop these new laws um, many people have opinions about this uh, both on the side that it creates housing and both on the side that it changes an R1 zoning into something else. And I'm sure you'll have your own opinions. But we're in no hurry to address this issue in the, in the city of Los Alamitos. Um, we're going to watch a few cities stumble and be challenged. And we're going to look at their ordinances. Lisa's doing one in one of her cities right now. But um, in, there's a lot of interpretation of what these means, what these mean, especially in the, my, what's it called, the micro units? What? Yeah, the, the, well, the the junior, the, the yeah. junior, junior yeah, the junior uh, dwelling units where you can actually split your house by having two kitchens in it, and it's really designed that loosely. Wow. Yeah. I, I want to caution if you take the time and you read the HCD booklet. Um, there's a lot of chatter on the city attorney listserv that. HCD reaches some conclusions in what they say that we don't really know where they came up with their conclusions because it goes against the plain meaning of the statute. So it's, it's going to be very hard to go into court to with some of their positions and go, yeah, the language says this, but HCD says you can do it. Um, <coughs> so just if, if a, a housing community development, Department of Housing and Community Development who Steve gave you the booklet on. Um, and that'll probably come up for you when it talks about the questions on the size of the units because the statute says one thing and HCD says something different. And I think the consensus among the city attorneys is we probably have to go with the language of the statute despite what HCD has said in their guidance. How does something like that get resolved? I mean, does somebody end up filing a lawsuit against HEB? Pro probably, or there's clarifying legislation. Yeah. Um, one of the problems <coughs> with this statute and also with the density bonus ordinance is there were two or three bills addressing each of the same code sections. So the, if you look at the legislation, it actually lists like two separate sections in each bill and then it says well this section applies if it's chaptered last and then this section doesn't apply a and it really got to the point where i think everybody kind of said i'm just waiting till the new books come out <laughs> you know what i'm talking about victor <laughs> when the the legislation is actually published uh, in final format um and they did this on several bills this year and i also heard there are already 32 housing bills that have been introduced for next year wow 
this is a big issue for the state. So we're in no hurry for you to pass a resolution. <laughs> we are going to start working on it. We'd like your support to start working on it because we don't want people to slip in and try to get something that maybe we can prevent. Uh, but we still have to follow the state's guidelines and we can't adopt an ordinance that conflicts with the state guidelines. Where we have issues though is the state guidelines as you can see are somewhat confusing. And some city that passes an ordinance is probably going to be challenged and asked to redraft their ordinance and so we're kind of watching for those things to occur. In, and until such time as the city drafts an ordinance and the state guidelines apply. Um, and I think it was included that the new language of 65852.2 is on, starts on page 19 of the HCD handout that Steve gave you. That's um, another one of these very long statutes. Not as long as density bonus, but. Yeah. Question. Uh, is there any consideration given uh, to cities when writing their ordinance about the uh, number of square footage they're allowed to be developed? In other words, um, it seems like when, when you compare our city to some other cities I've looked at, we allow much more square footage on a parcel than maybe some of the other cities do. Therefore, um, you know, to, to achieve the goal of this, the cities with that allow less square footage uh, so is that is that a consideration so given since we give more square footage than others is it it's so what the state law states now is a you have to you have to allow a minimum which would allow an efficiency unit which is 150 square feet I believe um, a lot of cities have minimums in their codes as to how small something has to be. You have to allow somebody to build 150 if that's all they want to build. Mm. If it is a detached accessory dwelling, then it can be up to 1,200 square feet. If it is an attached accessory dwelling, then the maximum size um, state law says is 50 percent of the existing dwelling unit but in no event greater than 1200 square feet so if you had a 3,000 square foot house you couldn't put on 1500 square feet unless the city wanted to allow that that extra square footage but i i think what most cities are doing is limiting it um to what the state says you have to do are those numbers in here uh, it's in 65852.2 of the ordinance side. What? At 1,200 square feet would be the attached. Right, and, and accessory dwelling units are specifically uh, called um, accessory buildings. Well, so it can't be if it is. Right, if it's 1,200. Yeah attached if it's detached right. 1200 so i know what we're doing in gardena is we're specifying that it has to be behind the main house because you do have that ability um and then i think they're de we're dealing internally s at a staff level of can you make your existing house the accessory unit if you have like a 400 square foot house <laughs> and <laughs> then you create have to a run all these scenarios. You really do. Mm -hmm. And then create a new if you have a large dwelling, dwelling unit. Um I would think. You you're unless you specify otherwise, I think the underlying oh wait, there are some specific things. If you build if you convert an existing garage, then I think there does not have to be any rear yard setback. No. There is, or side yard. Or side yard if, setback. If it's uh, against the fence, it can stay against the fence, okay. and you can build a second floor on it. Oh, but like, no, second yeah. floor needs to be five feet. Right, but, five I, foot but I'm setback. saying you don't have to tear down the. So a detached right. garage that, mm. and back of the house could become a residential unit and not have to move in five feet from the setback. Correct. Uh, correct. Yeah. Another question. 
if you, um, whether detached or attached, if you, the size of the accessory building is, is regulated uh, by the size of the existing or main building. Not for a detached. No. Attached up. Attached. Now, if, what if to, to, to allow the accessory building to be bigger, you increase the size of the existing building? You could probably, if you can do that within your yep. yeah. FAR or yeah. whatever the density is, yeah. And yeah. so that would be... To uh, get up to 1,200, but 1,200 the max. So if that came to the, to the commission or that came to staff... It doesn't come to you. It, it doesn't to you, come to you, yeah. Would it come as one, one project? If they phased it that way, yeah. Or they could try to do it covertly and do it in two steps. Any, it applies right now to any residential zone, uh, to the R1 zone and any other residential zone on which there is an existing single family home. So if you have a single family home in your R2 or your R3, they can do an ADU. Now why in why, some- Yes, yeah, that, that you can do yeah. that anyway. Well, yes and no, depending what your city's code's in. is right. Like Gardena has a minimum size for their unit. So right. we do too. they couldn't just do a small right. unit there. Yeah. This allows the ability, the idea is that the smaller units are either providing additional housing for, for family members or they become less expensive rental type units. And if you're addicted to the tiny house nation like I am. That's that's what <laughs> began the, all of this is people that, 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 seeing those cute little houses and going, hey, right. I want people one of those are definitely in moving in so. this direction of downsizing. So I can build a little house in my backyard which isn't really big. Mm -hmm. If you meet the and setback. if you meet the other it and keep my park <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> the bigger dog. <laughs> Tape, tape's rolling, right? Well, so if you have, like we have, like we have, I'm just having a set of conversations with trying to figure out a way to convert his laundry room into a living unit. Oh, wow. And I said, it's not going to work. Cause, but anyway, we have a whole string of properties down on Parkway, just to give an example, that have a single family home in the front, approximately 1,100 square feet. Behind them are three units that have been built. And they all have super large laundry rooms. They were designed, quote, uh, as a laundry room rec room. And then as soon as the permit was final, then they would convert it into a studio apartment because it already has a shop, a bedroom, and mm -hmm. a shower, bathroom shower. And they did. It's already in there. Because <laughs> it, it was a rec room. <laughs> Legally room. converted? Or? Oh, no. No, no illegally. No, 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 <laughs> no they, they, they did that, and then they got caught umpteen years ago. And so, but now, buying this this accessory unit you have the house single family home in the front you have the space in the back you know and it would it would make a good unit i mean it mm -hmm. all it would have, meet all the requirements of bathroom and windows and etc so it, but what are the parking like requirements? Oh, okay. <laughs> now squeeze in oh, the, uh, well, you're not it requires going to be the owner to live in one of the units, though. If that's your code, you don't have to make that. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. That 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 that's is up one. to and each that city. Be our code. That's, that's one, one of the things that we can put in. Definitely, yeah. it yeah. hasn't been challenged. And, and again, whether <coughs> you want that in the R1 unit <laughs> or you want that um, in the R2 unit as well, I know certainly if you. If your R2 and your R3 units are already rental type areas, maybe it doesn't matter. Just just things to um, to consider. The parking requirements <coughs> you're not going to like at all. What the state has basically said is that a if you convert your existing garage, you didn't we, you cannot make them replace the existing garage. Really. <laughs> The wow. parking can be um, tandem parking, parking in the setback areas, unless you make a specific finding that you don't allow tandem parking or parking in the setback anywhere in your city. Did they include the front lawn? 
Yeah. That you could park on the front lawn. <laughs> no, if you pay that, it. Don't think. If you pay yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, Terrific. So replacement spaces can be located in any configuration on the same lot as the accessory yes. dwelling unit, including but not yes. limited to covered spaces, uncovered spaces, <coughs> tandem spaces, or mechanical automobile parking lifts. Um, then, if your accessory dwelling unit falls into any one of these categories, you cannot require any parking for the accessory dwelling unit. Half mile of public transit, um, architecturally and historically significant historic district, part of the existing primary residence or an existing accessory structure. So if you were to have a 1,200 square foot house and you wanted to carve 200 feet off into an existing, into a separate accessory dwelling unit, no additional parking. Um, if you have an on-street parking permit uh, requirement, but the occupant of the accessory dwelling unit couldn't get that, um, or when there's a car share vehicle located within one block of the accessory dwelling unit. And the entire city is within a half mile of uh, yeah. transit. public transportation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it, no parking. Wow. For any of this. Sounds Crazy. like uh, a hut in Fiji fast. is the place to go. We're done. <laughs> Do we really need a code book? Do we really need any development standards? No? Why don't we just. Well, according to the state, state, you don't need wants nothing. a free for all, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. You at least want to put in things that it has to be architecturally compatible. I mean, I mean, it is kind of a joke. It's like the density bonus as well, where they say you have to adopt a density bonus um, ordinance, and here's everything that it has to say. And if you don't adopt it, it doesn't matter because state law applies anyway. So you're not, I mean, you can put in your, some, your own you setback. Like you can keep your doctor. <laughs> <laughs> not for not for long. <coughs> um, you could put in some setback requirements, distance between structures, um, if you wanted to. Right now, whatever you have in the code between accessory building and the main structure is what will control, um, because these are called again classified as an accessory dwelling unit. So we have to specifically call it out in this code, if in, in the second unit, I'm sorry, accessory dwelling unit. We've gone from calling them in-law granny flats mm -hmm. to second dwelling units to now they are called accessory dwelling units. And I don't know why they have to keep changing the term on us. And it moved fast. I'm buying a tiny house. Yeah. New Sticking in my backyard. Fast. There's a trailer yeah. wheel on the backyard. I think I can too. We're going to be a of course it was. Put people it's going to be a shame. It doesn't have to be So with that, we wanted to, to let you know this is coming your way. We're going to draft any input you want. Please email me and let me know what you think. If you're watching newspapers and see interesting articles, spread them around. Let me know. Michelle will disseminate it to all the other commissioners. Hmm. Um, and we'll just get all our heads together and try to develop something that works for us out. That works. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah. Sorry. All right. So, um, do we have to adopt the resolution? We don't. We have. We need. Yeah. Oh, do we need to do that? Well, no, but but, but you'll be oh. even worse if you can't at least control the few <coughs> things you want to, like requiring somebody to be an owner. Yeah. To live in one unit. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution number 17-02. I'll second it. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay. That takes us to items from the Development Services Director, if we have any. State of the City is next Wednesday at um, Joint <coughs> Forces Training Base. 
um, this past week. If you want to register, you can um, do so by calling the Chamber of Commerce. It's a fun luncheon. This is the first time we're going to be recognizing businesses. So 10 businesses have been nominated by people in the city or have nominated themselves and will be recognized at that um, meeting. Um, so that'll be an interesting twist to it. We've never done that before, so that's a, a nice touch. Um, and the Race on the Base was this past weekend, very successful, and very successful Friday night with the kids run. It was really great glow run, and the kids mm -hmm. had a really great time. And then Saturday was really well attended because a lot of people are stir crazy because they haven't been able to run on week other weekends. So we had a lot of really good attendance on Saturday at the base. And... Um, with that, nothing else to report. Two, yes. questions. Two questions. Um, Steve, can you enlighten us on the changes with the sign? Sure. Um, yeah, I, I keep me keep me on topic, um, City or, Madam S Assistant City Attorney. Um, as you all know, you've been emailed when the appeal was someone appealed your decision that was done in November. They they appealed it in a timely manner, and uh, Lincoln Properties and the appellant had settled. And the appellant had withdrawn his, withdrew his appeal asking that the hearing not occur. No hearing occurred because you don't have an appellant. It's kind of like not having an applicant. Can you have a hearing? Pretty, pretty similar. Um, a lot of people were upset with that. So we have a lot of the public showing up at any meeting possible to discuss the issue. And they've attended Rossmore Community Services Board meetings, Traffic Commission meetings, our city council meetings and um, the school board meetings um, trying to find a way to stop the sign but the changes in the project were um, that were agreed upon between the appellant and the applicant we may never know the details of we may never see that settlement agreement we but won't we'll, it was but, yeah, but we were told that it the sign gets lowered yeah to 90 feet maximum Tw 20 well it was more than that then yeah, 30 30, 30 foot feet. It's no longer a digital sign, so it will right. only be names of businesses on the sign, and they will not move or change. So no bananas for $1.99. Correct. Mm -hmm. right. And 2,000 square feet instead of 3,000. Instead of 3,050. Yeah. Right. So those, those, and then um, the other point was a sum of money provided to some entity unnamed not city. for the, for the uh, benefit of the children's safety going to Oak Middle School. Very vague. Wow. We don't know a thing about that. Um, but uh, yeah, that's it. So the project has changed. Um, and then um, the next um, step is for Lincoln to move along with their drawings and to go into plan check. Excellent. Second question. Does the amendment of the, or this changing of the trash disposal container at McDonald's violate a condition of that? No. No. Nah. No. No, nah, there's certain administrative. No, actually, they came no, to you. No, they, yeah. They you, had, you did it via site plan review. Okay. If yeah. you remember, Kevin came to you about seven months ago to ask for this change. It was a modification of his conditional use permit. Okay. Right. So the site plan that's there today was approved by the commission seven months ago, maybe? Yeah. Seven or eight. Mm -hmm. So tonight wasn't a reopening of that hearing. It was just an update of the project. If this had gone south, we would have recommended you actually reviewing those conditions again. It would be tonight would have been more formalized, okay. but it seemed to have worked, and you wanted that update, so we made sure we provided that update. Yeah, that was great. Mm -hmm. I was like, why with the status on the hotel? The hotel is uh, done with their first plan check through us. <coughs> plan check is when they bring their blueprints in. They're this big around. They bring them to the counter and they asked us to review them to make sure they're compliant with the building code. We have done that. We've provided those corrections back to them. And now it's up to their consultants, their draftsmen, their drawers, their architects to revise those drawings and get them back to us. And then when that occurs, they'll move forward. So that's been about a month we've been sitting in limbo. How long does that usually take? Um, Immediate. You know the industry. The industry's pretty crowded. If I were to call an architect asking him to draw up his drawings, they can choose the work they want right now and they're very busy. Yeah. They're not as hungry as they once were. They're not sitting around waiting for work. For his, so his guys are probably moving slow. I'm hoping that's what it is. Yeah, it used to be very fast. And Tom they calls them to about get it over with real quick. Yeah, too. Tom calls them about once every other week yeah. and engages them in a conversation to make sure they're still moving forward. 
And then the Los Al Boulevard project, the center median project is out to bid. Those bids come back on Thursday. Um, Old Dutch Haven is under construction this week for repaving their project. The bike trail is beginning on the 1st, the repaving of the bike trail here above Coyote Creek Park. <coughs> um, you know where the bicyclists go. It's um, in pretty bad condition. Is that, where is that? Not, oh, the, uh, not the Cerritos one that you're thinking oh, okay. of. Yeah. yeah, that one, we hope that we've won the CDBG grant for that, okay. for fixing that. Yeah, the, so. But the Coyote Creek, yeah. a bike path that people take from Seal Beach up north, that was in pretty poor condition in our city. So we got a grant from the Rivers and Mountains Conservancy, put it out to bid, uh, got, finally got the uh, Army Corps of Engineers permit, the county, LA County Public Works permit. We're all in line, it's bid out, the bids are back, we've awarded the contract, now they're gonna start. But all these construction projects are a little <coughs> bit lacking in speediness because they can't finish their last job because of rain delays. Mm -hmm. As you know, you know, it's hard to get a contractor over to your job if he's delayed on the last job. So that's what we're encountering, a lot of delays due to rain on their previous jobs. So their start dates in our city keep getting pushed back. We have sidewalk lifts and ADA ramps also and yes. uh, all over the city, so. Once the median gets awarded, that con how quickly do you think that will happen well if they're good with contracts we could probably start within 30 days but oh. if they're not getting their assurance evidence to us and their contracts back to Michelle sometimes that's like pulling teeth because they're secretly delaying because they haven't finished their last project yet right. if you know what I mean yeah so a lot of it a lot of that happens you know you go with the low bidder they're not done with their previous project they have to stage it we'll have to find them a staging facility staging facility is usually a vacant lot available for them to put all their equipment so not the bringing their equipment into our city and then taking it out of our city every week yeah or every day after work so a lot of that has to occur after the bid after the bids are opened it goes to city council for acceptance of that bid if the price is way away from the engineer's bet estimate we kind of have to redesign the project or take some nice features out of a project and say we don't have enough money to do it that way um, so that option is there too and then we do the contract if council awards um, if council awards in March then we Michelle starts the contracts the insurance evidence a pre-construction meeting and then a start date now, will they be closing lanes for that? Should we wait until school's out no, to do that? No, they will not be closing lanes. They will close off your parking to divert the lanes around the construction. You'll always have, you have two physical lanes that move now and then a bunch of right-hand turn lanes slash parking. Yeah. So you're going to lose that right-hand turn lane slash parking area as when it diverts okay. in that area or shifts to the left here, shifts to the right there. Will always remain two lanes in parking unless there's for a couple of hours like some of the digging you've seen go on in the city recently with the Orange County Sanitation District they're taking out two lanes and then we learned and we moved them to nighttime and now so. it's like Sim City every night <laughs> <laughs> all right um. We're at uh, commissioner reports. Anything from the commission? I don't have a report other than just to thank you for the appointment. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. I guess that's that's it. I think uh, we're adjourned. March second. March twenty second. What? March twenty second. Okay.